All right, welcome to episode one of Your Education. We are at the Endurance Edge. My name is Chris Newport. I am the head coach and nutritionist at the Endurance Edge. And this is Sarah. She is also a registered dietitian and we are both um, certified sports nutritionists as well. So we are here to talk about uh, a most recent question that we got on Instagram. So we posed the question, you know, what do you guys really want to know about? And here's what we got from uh, a gentleman named Alan. So he says, I'm interested to learn how to fuel right before race day, particularly for long course racing, which would be um, like half Ironman and um, Ironman distance. So aside from breakfast, lunch, and dinner, is there anything else that we should be doing, like uh, pre prehydration load, caloric net load the night before or race morning? Um, he, apparently he's been experimenting with some uh, race morning and race day, uh, which sounds kind of like carb loading. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, so and he's wondering whether it's bad for my health. And we definitely have some opinions on this, <laughs> which is why we're here to teach you guys about this. So uh, it sounds like he's also doing um, engineered products, it does. Which, like bars, gels, probably a lot of sports drinks. So speaking of the hydration part first, so your kidneys are really good at what they do on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. Um, they have no idea that you're getting ready to do a race. So... Um, you know, really it's best to just keep your hydration normal. We have a really fantastic um, hydration guide that's on our website. If you go to our website, um, you can sign up to get our free hydration guide. And it has a cool chart on there, uh, which we also have in our bathroom, which I'm always using. <laughs> so just making sure that you have light colored, kind of like lemonade colored urine throughout the day. That should make sure that you're plenty hydrated going into the next day. So there's really no need to have all this extra sugar in your system. Yeah, and extra sugar. Potentially, for a long, long, um, over time could really pose a problem. It could, and also, to speak on that part, if you're overhydrating, like, and you're not used to it, when you go for race day, you might have to urinate up more frequently, and that could slow you down a little bit, so just something yep. to think about. Yep, absolutely. Another thing to think about from a carb perspective, you would be doing all these carbs, is for every gram of carb that you take in, you hold three grams of water. So if you're doing a big caloric load the day before, you're probably, it sounds like it's worked well for Alan, mm -hmm. and that's great, but you're probably gonna be a little bit bloated. Um, you might feel a little bit sluggish. You might actually experience a little bit of muscle soreness. Mm -hmm. It's kind of actually one of the side effects of um, carb loading. I think one of the main th points that we wanna drive home today is that everybody's fueling plan should be unique everybody's different so you have to experiment find what works best for you but definitely our what we're trying to encourage people to do is to eat real foods try not to go overload on the added sugars um i feel like athletes kind of feel like they're a little bit invincible mm -hmm. like oh well i work out all this time i can have all the sugar i want and that's really not the case yeah maybe not be the best feeling strategy for them right so if you want us to talk about um, carb loading, definitely put some comments uh, down below and let us know because we can get into that. But that's a whole other topic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we can talk for hours till now. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, so, but I think that leads us nicely into what do you do pre-workout? And this would be like immediately before um, either a race or a workout. Mm -hmm. So do you eat? Do you not eat? Um, you know, there's some strategies kind of both ways. Um, Sarah just got done working with the NC State uh, athletic team, so tell me a little bit about what they did. So yeah, we just kind of did guidelines um, for our athletes, and we would tell them to, the closer to the event, have simple carbohydrates, so things like applesauce, fruit cup, the bagels, the, the white grains, bread, pretzels, things like that. Um, we did so have easy a, to digest. Exactly. Right. Simple carbs are easy to digest, and they're there for that immediate energy. So if it's like 30 minutes or 10 minutes before a uh, workout event, what have you, those are going to be the best options for them. Yep. Um, they did have some engineered products, so we did do some bars, but if you're going to do a bar closer to, you kind of want more of like the higher carb bars, so Nutrigrains, Chewies, yep. and stay away from those like higher protein bars. Yeah. Um, some other things uh, before, if it was anywhere from 30 minutes, Beyond. So if it was like an hour before or two hours before, we would mainly recommend a meal. 
So that would be more complex carbs, fruits and vegetables, whole grains, things like that. Yeah. So you do definitely want to eat ahead of time. It's just a matter of how far in advance is it determines kind of what you eat and your right. strategy from there. So. so, and why should we care uh, how far out? Like, what does exercise do in terms of digestion? So during exercise, a lot of your body's energy is put towards the actual exercise instead of digestion. So if you're eating a lot of high protein, high fat foods that closer to an event, you may not have the energy to, to digest those. You might get some upset stomach, things like that. Yep. Yeah, so a little quick science tip here. It takes your stomach about four hours to completely empty. So the higher fat meals um, are going to stick in your stomach a lot longer. Um, so you'll definitely have to experiment with that. So are you a peanut butter? Mother? I love peanut I butter. I could like <laughs> inhale a jar of peanut butter. And I have learned through experimentation that I cannot do peanut butter within four hours of doing a hard workout, like a, either a race. I'm more of a short course racer, um, but a race or like a really hard interval workout because mm -hmm. You'll pretty much see it all over my shoes. <laughs> that's where yeah. that's going to end up. So, um, Bananas are another one. That'll work for me. And hummus. Oh, really? Oh, hmm. hummus is... Hummus I see, but yeah, a lot of our athletes would go for the banana right before. Yep. But, like, it just goes back to that thing. Every, different strategies for different people. Absolutely, yeah. So, particularly um, some interesting strategies, like if you have reflux or... That's going to change the story if you have celiac disease. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's some sort of medical issue or thyroid conditions, because you can't take your med, you have mm -hmm. to take your medicine. You can't take anything, and I can't eat. Um, so yeah, everybody's a little bit different. Um, if we want to get into really specifics in terms of pre-workout, so the evidence uh, or general guidelines mm -hmm. really points to having those quality carbohydrates somewhere in the neighborhood of one to two hours beforehand gives you a little bit of time to digest, but not um, not necessarily eating a full meal. So interesting research there pointing to one to four grams of carbohydrates per kilogram of body weight, which I generally don't recommend to anybody. <laughs> That's almost a whole day's worth of carbs. It really is. So for example, if you're 75, uh, what, I think that was right, 75 kgs, mm -hmm. which is like 165 pounds, um, Four grams of carbs would be like 1,200 calories. Yeah. Which... That's ridiculous. That is. Some people eat that in an entire day. And then right. you'd eat that an hour before going yeah. out and running 10 miles. Yeah. Yeah. No. So I try to lean people a little bit more towards the one gram mm -hmm. or maybe a little bit less. So a good example that we were just talking about is uh, a triathlon that I did last month out in Greensboro. So from here, we're in Cary um, to Greensboro. Took me about an hour and 20 minutes, okay. and I had to get up at 3.30 in the morning, Yeah, which was like murder. <laughs> really? It's like going to bed. <laughs> yeah, so that's what, when my alarm goes off, I'm like, so why again do I do this sport? <laughs> like, who? Oh, wait, I signed up for it. Yeah. Um, so I got in my car at 4 o'clock and didn't have gas because that was good planning. Um, so I went to the sheets, which, like we were talking about, it has some pretty good options. Yeah, Sheets is probably one of the best gas stations, convenience stores for having healthier options or totally. good variety. They yeah. kind of have it all. So Yes, I agree. So I didn't know what I wanted for breakfast that morning, so I stopped at the Sheets, <laughs> went in and kind of wandered around. I'm sure I got a lot of interesting <laughs> uh, looks because I was dressed in my gear up on the car <laughs> at 4 a.m. at 4 o'clock in the morning at like a truck stop, <laughs> which is always safe. Um, so, but they had, um, I mean, they had everything from like donuts to coffee, which I did brew and take that mm -hmm. in my car, um, to um, bars, to fruit, fruit bagels, yeah, yeah. sandwiches, um, like little cheese. Like, like nut mixtures, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they have a lot of options there, which um, can be kind of bad for me because then I end up <laughs> standing there instead of actually going to the race. Um, but I chose an RX bar. Yes. I'm so, a huge fan of those right yes. now. <laughs> so uh, it did get a little bit stuck in my teeth, but I was the only one in the car and it didn't really matter. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure my dentist would not be so happy about that. <laughs> um, so I had an RX bar. It was the maple... Maple syrup, maple sea salt, or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that had dates and egg whites and 
think cashews. Mm -hmm. They typically um, have a nut in there. Yeah. So, and then I got a little bowl of um, strawberries and blueberries. And as I was checking out, I, uh, I just ate it though, but it was a piece of chocolate. <laughs> so I pretty much love chocolate and I eat it all the time. So, um, good quality carbs in the strawberries and blueberries, mm -hmm. good quality carbs. Um, there was dates in that RX bar. Mm -hmm. Um, chocolate is amazing. Um, <laughs> so, so that all probably, if I were to add it up in terms of grams of carbs, it probably would have set me around maybe like 50-ish mm -hmm. grams of carbs, which is a little bit shy of one gram of carb per kg, but I had some of that protein and fat in there too, which I knew that I was going to get hungry. Mm -hmm. So I bought that, and then I had that probably, the race started at 7 o'clock in the morning. I had that probably around like 5.30-ish. Because uh, I knew if I was going to eat at 4, which I don't want to ever eat at 4, because I'm never, I'm staring at the back of my eyelids. Yeah, it's hard to be hungry at that time of the day. <laughs> yeah, so I knew I'm, I wasn't used to it, um, so I just kind of let it sit, and then uh, and then at 5.30 started eating. Mm -hmm. um, got coffee on board, um, and then got everything set up once I got there. Took a little trip to the Port of John because that's important. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> not fun to have that feeling. No, <laughs> two minutes into the no, race, not at all. And that could be another blog. Yeah, uh, or another <laughs> blog. Um, so if you want to know how to get everything moving before, just let us know. Um, so that I had great energy the whole whole race, and um, right beforehand did do a little uh, nitric oxide supplement, citrulline. Mm, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> super fabulous stuff so I can put a link to that in the bottom as well so that was just something that worked well for me um, but again you got to experiment I try to have people have at least three different options of what they're gonna have whether they're gonna be traveling or whether they'll be at home okay um, so that's kind of a nice you know so you get used to it because sometimes you're a little nervous on Race Game day, day, race day. Exactly. Whatever. So you mentioned you like to have people try things out ahead of time. How would you recommend them trying out a feeling strategy? Is it, are they supposed to do it when they're practicing, when they're training? Do they mimic the race? How does that kind of work out for it? Yeah, so good question because not everybody has a race that they want to just throw away potentially. Exactly. Um, so I would choose a lower priority race if you are going to do a race day, but some sort of race simulation mm -hmm. in training, try that. And think about what you're going to eat the day before, too. Okay. So um, probably not the best day to try something new. Try something new. Yes, yeah, yes. that new, like, Ethiopian <laughs> restaurant <laughs> might not be the best choice. But it might be It might be fine. I am a big fan of burritos. Okay. Does not work for pretty much anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> so basically you're saying train your gut like you train for a race. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, all right, so keep your questions coming in terms of what you guys want us to go over. But I think main things, main takeaways here, hour to two hours, have a little bit of a snack, good quality carbohydrates, mm -hmm. fruits, veggies, um, oatmeal. Mm -hmm. What other things do you like to do? Um, before, you could do smoothie. Yep. Has, you could have juice and some of the fruits in there and get some of those carbs. Yep. Um, Banana. I, I like to go for more like the simpler option. Yep. Just grab and go. Yep. So. Yeah. Um, easily portable. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. The further out from when you're doing a, a race, um, the bigger the meal that you can have. Remember that stomach empties at about the four hour mark. So three to four hours beforehand, you might be sitting down to a regular meal. Familiar foods. Yes. Um, whole foods, if possible. Try to avoid the things with um, lots of added sugars. Continue to stay hydrated, mm -hmm. light yellow of urine, and you should be set to go. So again, this is Chris and Sarah from the Endurance Edge, uh, finishing up episode one <laughs> of your education. Um, post your comments below, and also be sure to post any additional questions that you guys might have. Um, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, um, send us a tweet. Where else are we? <laughs> Everywhere. Or give us a call. <laughs> yeah. Um, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you in episode two.